Hello everyone and welcome to a different type of video here on this channel. This video is a follow-up to the bottle cap holder project that I did. If you haven't seen that, I'll put a link to it here and down in the description field. But this video is a tutorial on how I made the vector shape for that project. And the intended audience are folks that have never used Illustrator before. Or maybe you have it have opened it a couple times and are confused or curious about what the tools are. This video is for you. I'm going to show you a few basic tools that can get you started in the program. Now, there are hundreds of ways to achieve this shape in Illustrator, and I'm going to show you one way. It is not the only way. It is a way to get you started. So for folks that have Illustrator experience, you might find this video not that relevant to you. But for people that are just starting off with the program that want some guidance, this is the video for you. Let's get started. Let's open up Illustrator. And the first thing you see is this nice little welcome screen. And we're going to create a new project. We go over to create new. And for my project, I knew roughly the size that I needed the uh, shape to be when it was all cut out. I'm going to put those parameters in right now and set our canvas up to about that size. Over on the right hand side of the screen, you can see where you can input the width and height of your canvas. Six inches wide by 13 inches tall is just about where I want this finished project to be. And for those that use the metric system, that's roughly 152 millimeters by 330 millimeters in there. Not real important you get this right. You can always change it later. But the advantage of Illustrator is that you are making vector shapes and not using pixels. So even if your object is too small or too large, you can always scale it up or down later on and you're not going to lose any resolution. Let me go down and click create. And here is our canvas, all blank and ready to go. There are a few tools that I want to show you first before we get started that will help us navigate through this. For today's project, we are going to mainly use type tool and the rectangle tool and the pen tool. So we need to find an image of a beer bottle. In the Googles, just type in beer bottle and we're just gonna find an image that we like. We're not gonna copy this image and use it for any sort of personal gain. We're just gonna take an inspiration shape from it. In an internet search, you can type the shape you're looking for and find what you like. I happen to like this one right here. So I'm gonna click on it. I'm gonna right click and save it to the desktop. JPEG image is fine. And let's jump back into Illustrator. And now we're gonna place that image into the file. So you can drag and drop from your desktop to this canvas, or you can go up to File and Place and choose your image where you saved it and click Place. And now Illustrator will ask you to basically draw the shape in of where you want that to live. And over here on the left-hand side, you can click the Selection Tool or Shortcut V so I roughly want to get this the size that I need it, knowing that it's going to be about 13 inches tall. So I'm going to drag that and get it to approximately the right size that I need. And that is our background layer. And speaking of layers, we're going to open up the layers panel and that will show us all the things that we are putting into this canvas. So on the right hand side of the screen, if you see this icon down below, that is the layers icon. If you don't see that, you can go up to window and go all the way down to layers and click that and it'll pop up for you. And this is the little menu of things we'll have placed in our file. There's just the one image in our file right now. And if you click on that, it'll highlight it and you can scale it again or move it around, whatever you like to do. I'm going to go in the space right here and lock this layer. And what that means is I don't have to worry about it moving or shifting on me while I put things on top of it. It is locked in place and therefore cannot be moved. And before we start tracing the shape of this bottle, I'm going to turn on the rulers on the canvas. So if you don't see the rulers on your canvas, you can go up to the view menu and down to rulers, show rulers, and that will populate the rulers on the top and side for you to use. And to use the ruler function, what you do is take your cursor and you're going to drag out what they call a guide. So click and drag from that ruler and I'm going to place this guide right down the middle of our placed image, right about there. And same thing we do with the image. I want to lock this guide into place so that it doesn't move on us. Go up to view again and go down to guides. Right now I have it 
already locked. You can choose unlock if you want. This will give you the ability to move that ruler around, which I don't want. So I'm gonna go back up to view guides and lock guides. And that guide is now locked in place. We have our image, we have our guide. We are ready to start tracing out our shape. We are gonna go over to the pen tool. You can click Z to zoom in and spacebar gives you the little hand to move the shape around on the screen. And we're gonna start dropping points on our shape. Pen tool is highlighted. Now the pen tool can be tricky. And if you're new to this, it might seem a little tough to get used to. Right now, all we're focused on is just getting the shape of the bottle. Notice that this pen tool is leaving straight lines in this. We are gonna go back and adjust the curves a little later. But as a default, when you use the pen tool as a click, 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 it puts in straight connections between what they call the anchor points. You can draw curves with the pen tool on the fly. If you click down and place an anchor and then stay clicked down with your mouse and pull that anchor out, you will see these two handles come off of the anchor point and that will allow you to curve that line. So you can see that I'm clicking and adding an anchor point, but I'm not unclicking the mouse yet. I'm gonna drag those handles out a little bit to get some curves. And here's a straight line, bottom of the bottle. Here are some more anchors with curves. You can see it's click and drag out, click and drag out. We get to our halfway point, put an anchor on the guide and go all the way back up to the top and click the very first anchor point you made. And you can see that the little symbol next to the pen tool has a little close symbol next to it. If you click on that first anchor point, that means that the shape becomes closed and it becomes a workable shape to use. If you don't close your shape, it'll just be a path. You won't be able to fill it as you want to. You'll have to go back and close that shape later. We have our rough outline of our bottle made with the pen tool. And the first half of it was just the click and release anchor points that are all straight connections. So we need to go back and change those straight connections into curves. Back over to the pen icon in the toolbar, click and hold down on that tool and a pop-up window appears. And we're gonna use the anchor point tool or it's shift C, the shortcut. And this will allow you to click on the anchor points of your shape and do the same click and drag out to make handles. So let me zoom in here a little bit. We'll go back to that uh, anchor point tool, shift C. There it is. And I'm gonna click on an anchor point and click and drag on that anchor point. And that will give us those handles again. So there we are. And you can see the shape of the line curve out. So you can kinda adjust your curve to where you want it. So you can make it wider, you can make it thinner. And if you're not happy with where your anchor points are placed, you can go up to the direct selection tool, which is shortcut A. It is the cursor with the white inside of it, not the black and you can move these anchor points around and shift them to where you need them to. And again, we're just getting the rough shape of this. We're not trying to get this perfectly aligned. We're just trying to get the rough shape of the bottle. So I'm gonna move these anchor points to where I want them. And I'm gonna continue on adjusting the anchors and handles of all of these to get the curves right. And there we go. Let's go over to the layers panel and see what we have. In our layers panel, we have our locked image. We have our guide, which is locked from before, but just not showing locked on this layers panel. And we have what is called a path. What we made with the pen tool is a path right now. I'm gonna click on that path and I'm gonna go over to the other side of the screen to the fill and stroke section. This box here on top is the fill. That means it would be a filled in shape of a color. And the box behind it is the stroke. That would be the outline of a shape. Now right now, both of these boxes have a red slash through them. That means that nothing is specified for those values yet. Let's put a value in for the fill. I have the fill box selected. I click on it. Right below it, there is a white swatch. I can click on that swatch and it turns it white. You can now see the fill is white on the left side and our bottle shape is now filled in with white. And the color palette menu popped up over on the right hand side. If you go over there and click on the black swatch, it will turn the object black, which is what we want. So we're gonna leave that as is for right now. 
we have half of our bottle drawn and filled in with black. That's really all we need in terms of our original image. I'm gonna go back to the layers panel and hit the little eyeball next to that and turn that layer off. So now all we can see is our guide and our half bottle shape that we made. Now, in order to get this bottle symmetrical, I am just going to copy and paste that shape and what we call reflect in Illustrator, meaning to uh, flip it horizontally to get the full shape of the bottle. Click on the shape. I'm gonna go up to object and transform and reflect. And what we want to do is we're going to reflect this over the vertical axis. And we're also wanting to have a preview of that. So we'll click preview and we will click copy. And that gives us two shapes, one the original and the second one being a reflected copy of the original. Now we'll click on that second copy and we'll just drag it over to where it needs to go. It should snap right to that guide. And now we have the full shape of our bottle and it is perfectly symmetrical along the Y axis. So I'll turn that guide off and you can see our full shape here. Now this shape isn't perfect, but it will work for us because we were going to print it and then cut it out with wood. I'm gonna group these two together. So back in our layers panel, I'm gonna click on the two paths that we made, go up to object and group, and that will group these two pieces together. You can see over in the layers panel that we now have a new group. And that is how we make the outline of the bottle. And we're gonna keep it filled in with black because we'll have to print this off and black will work with the printer. So the next step here is to add some text that we're gonna to use to act as the cutout for our shape. We're gonna go over and click on the text tool. We're just gonna click once on our canvas and we're gonna type in our text. And we can always change the text later if we want to. So let's change that text to drinky. Okay. Now one consideration you have to have if you're going to cut out letters with a bandsaw is any letter that has a contained element in it, for instance, let me zoom in here and show you that this D and this R have that black shape contained inside the letter. And you're not going to be able to cut that on the bandsaw because the outline of your letter will remove that inside portion. So you need to add in some safety pieces so that the inside of the letters remain intact. Once you have your text placed where you want it, a quick and easy way to do that is just using the rectangle tool to draw a shape. So we're gonna go over and click on the rectangle tool. We're gonna to hold down on top of that and we're gonna choose rectangle. And we're just gonna draw a rectangle on top of our letter. Put it just about where we wanna put it, right about there. And then we're gonna double click on the fill. We're gonna change that to black again. And with the selection tool, slide it over into place. And that feels just about right for the R. I'm gonna use that same shape for the D. I'm going to click on it, go up to edit, click copy, edit, click paste, and it comes in. With the selection tool, you can just click and drag that into place. Let's put it right about there. And now that D and R shape have their insides remaining intact. We're gonna cut out the white area and we're gonna save the black area. Any letters that you have with those inside shapes, you wanna make sure you put those little shapes in so that the insides of the letters stay attached to the whole piece. And the final part here is how this bottle is going to be placed on the holder itself. I'm going to click and drag on everything that highlights everything we have active. I'm gonna go up to object and group, and that will group this entire thing as one unit. Everything is still editable, now it's all grouped as one element. And I'm gonna click on that entire group. I'm gonna draw some rough lines in, basically emulating the front and bottom. So this shape here is the actual map, let's say, and I'm gonna put a base on it here. These are just with rectangles. They're not gonna stay here. It's just for reference. And if that is the front and base of our holder, then we wanna angle our bottle so that it supports both those pieces. I'll click on the entire shape here. I'm gonna rotate it to where I think it feels just about right, right about there. That feels pretty good. Anything that's going past the front and the bottom of the holder would not be included in our cut. Again, a quick way to kind of get this 
printable is just a drop in a shape to hide that. Again, I'm just gonna use a rectangle tool over top of where the front of the map holder is. Portion right there. I'm gonna double click on the fill. I'm gonna change it to white. And that is our true shape of our bottle. And one more thing before we finish up here, we need to figure out how we're gonna attach this bottle to the base. So one way to do it is to add a little tab on the bottom of the bottle so that you can mortise the bottle into the base. I'm going to hide the front and base rectangles for now. I'm just gonna slide up this entire unit here. I'm gonna add one more rectangle on the bottom that's gonna act as a little tab for our bottle to sit in the base. So we're gonna draw that out. Gonna change color to black. And there we go. That is our finished shape. So the idea here is that you print this off on a piece of paper. Everything that is black is your template. Everything that is white is what you would cut out. On my project, I glued this to the piece of hickory. I cut out the rough bottle shape first, and then I went in with a scroll saw and cut out the shapes of the letters inside. That is the process of making a vector shape for your project. We use the pen tool to make the shape. We use the rectangle tool to add in some extra bits in order to keep our text from the text tool intact. Obviously these techniques work for a lot of other things. And hopefully for those beginners out there, this shows you how to get started with at least those three basic tools in Illustrator. And I know that's a fast tutorial for Illustrator for those that are just starting off, gives you some insight on how these tools are used. I hope this video was helpful for you and happy illustrating.